Yo, what's going on everybody? My name's Cast. Welcome back to another episode reaction of Free Run Beyond Journey's End. This time we're on episode 5. In the last episode, we essentially finished off the prologue of the story. Free Ren and Fern are about to embark on a very near 10 year adventure up to the land up north, to the land of heaven where you can speak with the souls, the land of Oriole. I have a feeling that this journey they're about to go on is going to continue the narrative of rekindling Freerin's old memory with our old party. She did meet back up with Aizen, which was really cool. Aizen is the only party member left that is still alive. And I guess, now that I'm thinking about this, speaking it out loud, Fern might want to speak with Hyther, perhaps? I mean, maybe they don't have too much left hanging, but Freerin definitely needs closure with Himmel. At least that's what we're going with for now. My feelings, like I said last episode, are still maybe a little bit mixed on that, but it all depends on the, how the story wants to do that, depending if I like it or not. So we'll just have to see when we get there. I'm really excited to go on this journey. I hope you guys are as well. If you want to watch my reactions to the next episodes right now, you can do so over on my Patreon. The Soul tier will be one episode ahead on episode six, and the Ascended tier will be multiple episodes early. It'll be shown right over here. Those reactions are also extended length, meaning that you get more reaction and more discussion to go along with each and every one of my reaction videos. With all that being said, let's jump into Episode 5 of Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. Free Ren. Oreoru o sagashite himmeru to hanasu nda. Tamashi no nemuruchi. Oreoru ni tadori tsuita. Oreol, okay. Soko wa ooku no tamashi ga atsumaru basho de. Watashi wa katsute no senyu tachi to taiwa shita. Yeah, so I speculated, I wonder if that's exactly true, or if that's leading to another lesson from, um, Flam to Free Run. I'm really working on the names. I wonder if Free Run's starting to understand the gravity of 10 years, especially to Fern. She's definitely changed from this perspective, even if she doesn't realize it yet. It's definitely been a trend so far that we've realized that Freerin feels things and knows things, but may not be super self aware of it yet. That's what the whole journey's about, really. For sure. She never dwelled on it, but of course it's true. She shed tears for other people for maybe the first time ever. I hope we do see Aizen again. I know he's old, but he is a dwarf, so he might live a lot longer. Free Ren in a lot of ways is basically like Fern's mom. Episode 5, Phantoms of the Dead. <laughs> so this might lend in a little bit of credit of uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah, because this is all alluding to the fact that she might be able to speak with them someday in Oriole. It would be a little bit less satisfying if this journey was just for Freerun. It's just nice to have it mean something to Fern as well, potentially, with like an end goal for her to be able to speak to either again and ask him if she's been a good girl or, you know, whatever they were talking about. If she made him proud. 28 years. A.H. 28 A.H. After Himmel. Okay, maybe I was wrong about there not being more side quests. The lady was very unbothered by the mention of undead. I guess that's not a super unnatural thing for you to hear in this world. Great! 
Hey, you don't even know, need to go all the way to Oriol. You got it right here already. Maybe Fern will speak to Hyther here. Okay. So not the real thing. Maybe it's like an illusion. Ominous coming from her. フリーレン様、村の人たち困っていました。ヒンメルたちみたいなこと言うね。私はフリーレン様とは違っていい子なので。まあ、ヘルンがいいならいいか。どうせ峠道は通るわけだしね。<笑> Yeah, she's definitely changed. She would never give any heed to what anybody said about things before, but she cares about Fern quite a lot. I was right! Illusion magic! I mean, that makes sense. My question is... Yainzim. My question is, how can they conjure a loved one? That would imply they're like reading someone's mind to know who's more important to them. The illusions probably can't actually hurt you. It's to lo lower your guard or something so the monster can attack you, maybe? Hmm, that's where they get you. Wow. Yeah. I was used to hearing her beg for her life. What does that mean? Yeah, please answer that question. That's more interesting to me. Yeah, but it's a lot easier to say that you can do something, but when you're actually put in the situation in front of somebody that you love, it might be a different story. General Hughes might know something about that. It's gonna be high there, yeah. Let's see if she can follow through like she said. Fern! Okay, so this was coming in a little bit early, but this might be used as a reference point for the future when she meets the real thing. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely a pretty strong magic if it can read your mind or read your memories or your past or whatever. Yeah, they should just trade off. Freerun shoots high there. And maybe Fern shoots Himmel? Like this? Hmm. The most important person to wear has changed, perhaps? I mean, as of late, have been thinking about him a lot. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, a little bit overkill, it was just an illusion. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, wait. The monster was behind him? Is that what it... Damn. Wait, so, I'm, I'm sorry. So, the monster summoned the ghost of Himmel, and the point of that was so that Freerun wouldn't attack, right? So that they could use her own weakness and pass against her. But rather than that, he's so good that he just said, shoot me, just because he knew that it would kill the monster behind him, the one that summoned him in the first place. That's kind of that's kind of epic if you really think about it. Even as a monster being used to attack Freerun, Himmel stole the goat. But one day you might be able to speak to the real ghost. Yeah, yep. Then. I like that. It's cool. Like I said, it'll be used as a reference point someday. Regal Canyon. Whoa. 
That might be more dangerous than what you just fought. いや。龍は魔力の込もったものを映像の材料にするからね。こいつは冒険者を何人も食っている。どちらにせよ仕留めておいた方がいいでしょう。普通に当てないように気をつけて。はい。Are あ、ま、ってこと。ええ、ピアスビーでケース。やっぱり龍は硬いね。仕方がない。逃げるよ。ランアウェイ。ダウズディオンリープランアデナガウェル。ようやく負けたか。死ぬかと思いました。じゃあ
Oh, easy. He said he fended it off from like a stalemate, right? So it shouldn't be an issue. <laughs>やっぱりそういうことか。いや、what? I thought he fended it off. <laughs> okay. Dude, what are you, King from One Punch Man? Or like Zenitsu? Like, are you unconsciously fending it off? Or are you just standing there and getting like really, really lucky and getting all the credit? What, what the heck? Uh, I mean, is this the truth, actually? That's funny, though. There has to be a reason. Like, he has to be secretly strong or something and just not realize it. Yeah. It sensed his aura. But Freerun seems sure of it, so... Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this guy. But it's probably a mixture of, like, a Zenitsu King situation. He probably is capable, but doesn't realize it himself. What This split in the mountain looks like something cut through it. Like, it doesn't look like a natural formation. He's got, like, a big axe. Did he do that, somehow? Is that why Freerun was inspecting it? I love it. Fake it till you make it. Everybody loves him. A little bit of a poser, potentially. But seems chill. Yeah, I mean, he has no experience. She's still meek and cute. Like I said, maybe it senses that he's actually strong and he could beat it in a fight. Yeah, because he's like Aizen's disciple or his apprentice. He's going to be capable somehow. Yeah, so this did mean something more. Hmm. He just needs to conquer his own heart, I guess. Yeah, no, this is totally like something that he's been splitting his way through. Damn. <laughs> okay, I was staring at this. I'm like, this could be natural, but it kind of looked odd. I'm, I'm kind of sad that I didn't say something earlier. Okay, yeah, he's sick. Is that like raw strength or is that like magic enhanced or something? Damn, or maybe it's the, um, with that final shot of the axe, maybe it's the axe is like imbued with magic or something to like reinforce it or something or make it more powerful that was really cool i'm really interested to see where this character goes not to brag or anything but i feel like i did a pretty good job this episode i was like keeping up with the story beats pretty well like i kind of predicted quite a few things going through that just got to give myself a little bit of a pat on the back there but like that being said i'm not disappointed in it at all for being maybe like a, a little bit predictable it was just the way this story works is that it doesn't go too far out there and get like too philosophical or too crazy with the plot points at least not yet but like everything is still really meaningful and it's very digestible and not only like from the little side quests and the characters and all that but like every little bit of this is important to the characters on a more like deeper emotional level it doesn't have to be like super deep or super profound but it is important and it's real nonetheless it's a very like grounded way to to introduce characters and plot points and i, and I like that it doesn't try to be something too crazy but it knows what it is and it's still well written all, all the same 
So yeah, we meet this character named Stark. I like his character design. I like his weapon. He seems really strong, so he's not going to be disappointing to watch in a fight. And it does it is a little bit nice to have somebody that's not just a mage, so we get more than just magic action. But Stark has a weak heart. He's a little bit of a coward. Maybe he has his reasons for that. I'm sure he has his reasons for that that we'll get into. And maybe that'll be another way for Freer and Fern to bond with him and maybe uh, look at him a little bit differently. Or maybe this is just going to be something he has to overcome. Maybe he doesn't believe in himself. Maybe he's... Like I said, having a Zenitsu situation where he's unaware of how... Well, no, it wouldn't make sense that he's unaware of how strong he is because he's, like, fully awake and slicing a, a canyon in half. So, I mean, I don't really know what's going on with him, but he's definitely got some stuff to work through. Aizen knows he has something to work through, but Aizen and Freerun both seem to be fairly confident. Even Freerun just now meeting him seems to be fairly confident because maybe Freerun assumes that if... Aizen says he's like me, then he's going to be a good companion nonetheless, because Aizen was probably one of the best con companions you can ask for. He was one of the four people that beat the, de the Demon King. So Freerun believes in him, maybe Fern will take a little bit of extra time, but you know, Fern is only in her, what I assume, like mid-teens or something. I She's probably been traveling with Freerun for, I don't know, close to 10 years or something like that. I don't have the timeline down exactly, but she started training Fern whenever she was really young, like maybe five or six or something by the looks of it. And then, yeah, she said more than half her life. So Freerun's not, or not Freerun, Fern's not that old, probably definitely under 20, I would say. Definitely has a little bit of uh, emotional development to do. And I hate to say it, as much as I love Freerun, Freerun Free Ren herself has a lot of emotional development to do, so Fern will be lacking in the same way without that uh, proper uh, parental guidance. She'll need somebody else to maybe show her some more um, range of emotions and whatnot. Even on the brink of death with a solar dragon chasing Fern, Fern, you know, a little bit scared, thought she was going to die, but was pretty composed, all things considered. Definitely inheriting that sum from Free Ren, and probably just by her nature as well. But they are both steadily changing, and that's really nice to see. But yeah, this episode seems like mostly a setup for the next one. It was really solid all the way through. I don't have any complaints at all, and I'm really excited to see what comes next. I'm assuming uh, this is going to be a really important battle for Stark, but we're just going to have to see. I'm sure it can go in many different directions, some that I probably won't predict or see coming. If you like my reaction to this episode, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel if you want. I know reaction channels aren't the ones that people always sub to, but it is there in case you want to support me. And of course, go check out my Patreon if you want to get the next episodes early for early access so you can see me react to them right now over on Patreon. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.